One of the most iconic Roblox games is Juke's Towers of Heck, formerly known as Kitty's Towers of Hell. The most famous of the hundreds of different obbies that this game contains is the original Tower of Heck, and the title of the world record holder for this specific stage is followed by hundreds of attempts and hours, which demands an impressive amount of skill because not everyone has the skills to become part of a dedicated spot at the top. A world record requires near perfection. Few people have reached this level, but those who have create a legacy on the leaderboard. This is the speedrun history of Tower of Heck. Let's start at the beginning. On June 6, 2016, the place for Kitty's Towers of Hell was created. Shortly after, the first tower began its development. However, it wouldn't be until early 2018 when the tower was revived and finished. In March 2018, Kato was officially released to the public, with Tower Heck being the only tower available. The tower contained 10 whole floors of precise jumps at the time, and messing up would send you down to the bottom. Players at the top found Tower Heck so hard that they did not plan to beat it, but rather see how far they could get. A couple months went by and many struggled with the tower, but by November 18th, Menacee submitted the first ever run to the speedrun leaderboard, which showcased an impressive 5 minutes and 36 seconds. A very strong run for the first speedrun. Menacee presented many skills, such as ladder flicking, which is a precise movement where the camera turns in order to stop climbing, making the game think that the avatar is standing, meaning there's a time window where the Roblox character can jump without being pushed back. Menacee showcased a floor 2 to floor 3 shortcut, a floor 6 shortcut, a floor 6 wraparound, a shortcut to floor 7, floor 8's purple slide shortcut, and a floor 10 shortcut. Although this was not the first ever speedrun, it was the first run submitted to the leaderboards and laid the groundworks for the category. However, there were many areas to improve, and a week later, a runner named Jacob Box 54 started his reign by submitting the first sub 5 minute run. Jacob Box performed many techniques that were previously neglected by Menacee. Probably because ladder flicking was too risky on the later floors, Menacee only performed the trick at the start, but whenever Jacob Box could, he would cut any time possible. Jacob Box also executed a skip at the 5th floor, where he could step onto an invisible block and skip the majority of the jumps. All in all, Jacob Box had a smoother and more fluid run with the inclusion of the floor 5 shortcut. Weeks later, Menacee struck back by performing the floor 5 shortcut, attempting every ladder flick possible, and although there was some time loss with mess ups, Menacee had faster movement leading to a world record of 4 minutes and 53 seconds. But Menacee had an issue with the way that he used his camera. The shift lock button would always be turned on, and that would result in sloppier movement. And so, by February 5th, a new runner named Stabby took the world record. Although his run was very slow at the start and made some minor mistakes, Stabby ran one of the best times at floor 9 and 10. And even though a new record had been made, it was very clear that there was a huge amount of time that could be lost. And a week later, a runner submitted a 4 minute 44 second run. Jacob Box was back. Jacob was fast and relatively consistent at all the speedrun tactics, so it was only a matter of time before he reclaimed his title at the top. However, two days later, a famous obvious named Khan2005 snatched a world record with a time of 4 minutes and 36 seconds. Khan performed more riskier jumps that would save small amounts of time, but throughout the run, his dangerous tactics led to higher rewards, 
and would save a total of 8 seconds. Jacob Box would not let this slide, and 4 days later, he ran one of the most legendary tower hex speedruns possible. A 430. This run was near perfect, and without new strategies, it'd probably take months to beat. And it stood. For 480 days. Jacob Box showed total dominance over the leaderboard, and the speedrun scene of Tower Hex seemed to slowly die out. But by 2020, with the push from the worldwide outbreak, players stayed home and it brought a revolution of a new wave of players. Out of the handful of new players attempting runs, a new runner started submitting runs that the community would soon see as a new hope to becoming a new record holder. His name was Zykotic. Zykotic started submitting runs in May, and on July 10th, he was on pace for a world record. However, he started panicking and a couple minor mistakes led to a 432, just two seconds off from matching Jacob's time. Oh my god, I hate this. Oh my god. Zykotic didn't give up and by August, he was once again on pace with the world record. And this time, he got it. I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. I beat the Tower of Heck world record. Oh my god. Oh my god. I did it. Finally. Finally, dude. Oh my god. That took so long. 432, 431. I actually did it. A 429. The first sub 30. With his dedication and countless runs, he was able to make history and break one of the longest reigns on the leaderboard. A couple weeks went by and nothing was close to touching Zykotic's crazy run. A month went by. And two months later, out of nowhere, Jacob Box was back with a crazy 425. A whole 5 seconds from Zykotic's run. This was unheard of because without a new shortcut, it would be extremely difficult to cut time off of Zykotic's run. And so, by watching Jacob's run, we can see where he got that extra time. It was an insanely tight shortcut, which could technically shave off a lot of time, but with the cost of losing a lot of runs. This shortcut was later coined the Jacob Box shortcut. However, Many future speedrunners would not attempt to add this to their runs as it was very tough to pull off consistently. So Jacob Box's new find with near perfect movement meant that it would be a strong run to contest. To test all odds, a new runner entered the scene, Crimsonith. A couple months after he entered the scene, he had performed a miracle 420 and a 418 run. Currently, these runs are not available to see as his account was terminated off of YouTube, but we can imagine that he had an extremely good run. In response, Zykotic grinded and 3 months later he achieved a new record of 4 minutes 18 seconds and 250 milliseconds, which was 320 milliseconds faster than Crimsonit's run. He was able to perform another skip on floor 4, where instead of climbing around, he went straight for the trust early. Note that this could have been performed earlier in Crimson its run, but I wasn't able to find the footage. And so, this newfound shortcut was able to match the time loss from Jacob Box's earlier skip, which led to world record pace. And with some tighter jumps, Zykotic was able to save more time and eventually gain the world record title again. That's it! That's it! A couple months later, world record was achieved by a new runner named Iku Player 3. Although no new finds were made, he was faster and sharper with his jumps, which shaved up a whole second. Then, Crimsonith came back, and by grinding for months, he was able to achieve an incredible 416. Even though there was still time to be cut, such as Jacob Box's shortcut, it was an extremely clean world record run and sits at the top of speedrun.com's leaderboard. But this is not the end of the Tower of Hex speedrun, because a runner named Pinto started recording his run on his YouTube channel. On March 7, 2022, he uploaded a 421, 
and although this was not the world record, it really showed his potential to the world. Three days later, he uploaded a 419. And on March 13th, Pinto was on pace to a 415 run. He had barely missed a purple slide shortcut, which was devastating and many would probably get tired of speedrunning this category. The same day however, he got a new personal best, meaning he wasn't going to stop until he got the world record. 5 days later, a 4.17.15, meaning he would be in 2nd place on the speedrun leaderboards. Six days later, he got a 4.16.87, missing the world record by 430 milliseconds. Finally, on March 25th, a day after his 4.16 run, he achieved a 4.15.950. He had been the first to achieve a 4.15. Pinto had accomplished his goal as being the Tower of Heck world record holder. He had made it to the top. And so, many would probably take a break from the long grind. But a month later, Pinto dropped another world record. A 4.15.8.10. And a month later, a crazy 4.13.81. This run is the current world record of Tower of Heck. A sub 4 minute run may be possible someday, but right now it seems out of reach. There may be a god run which could shave off a whole 14 seconds, but for today that is not humanly possible. That being said, Roblox physics is always being updated, and one day someone may be lucky and could get an insanely crazy run. As for tool assisted speedruns, maybe someday someone would be able to perform these crazy tricks. Eventually. I have hope that someone will break the community and reach an unbelievable 3 minute or even 2 minute run. But for today, we'll be in awe of all the dedication put in every runner to achieve a world record for the original Tower of Heck.